Awesome. Daniel, hi, how are you today? Not too bad. How are you doing? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. I got to say, I absolutely loved this show. I thought I was coming in to just laugh and had a, a good time. And then you hit me with some feels and some realism. And we're talking about so many, so many different things. Um, it's just absolutely incredible. I can't wait for, you know, North American audiences to take this show in. What was the inspiration behind the show? Uh, well, thank you, first of all. That's really, really lovely. I'm glad that you loved it so much. Um, so it, it was all based on an article I was shown. And it was mm -hmm. about five young black boys from London who were given scholarships to a private school out in the sticks, a place called Rugby. Um, and that private school was very white, very middle, upper class, very elite. Um, and the article just basically talked about their experience being there and and it it, it was a very fish out of water experience right. and it re resonated quite a lot with my own experience of where I grew up in South London and going to a university, which again was very middle class, very white and a completely different world. Um, and so it just resonated with me and I, I just felt like there was a, there was a story in that. Um, so it all, it all kind of developed from there, really. That's so cool. Wow. So you read an article, you're hearing about these experiences of these young students. Um, and you take that and you're like, okay, I, I think I could do something with this. I think I got something here. <laughs> I mean, pretty much. I think, um, I, I, I don't know. I think, I think the best stories are always stories that you can relate to. And so it, 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 it felt like the perfect story to to tell. And, you know, the fact that they all had their different experiences and, and going into this show and when you watch the show, you'll kind of see I've, I've made like five very distinct characters and how they kind of step into these institutions. And it was similar with myself and the few black faces that went to university. We all, all kind of came into that situation in completely different ways. Um, and it's just quite interesting to see how each of them kind of navigate that world. That's what I was going to say, too. Like, I feel like uh, the leads of the show, they're so dynamic. They all have their own personality. But even the side characters are very interesting and very funny as well. I know you didn't obviously cast the show, but I know that you have a hand in that. Um, what was like the what was the process like of finding this young talent, this fresh talent? Like, I feel like you did they did such a good job with casting like i'm i'm watching the show and i'm like oh man like there's there's a there's somebody for everybody and they're all so different yeah i mean it was so we had a great casting director called rosalie clayton and i'd worked with her before and i knew that she would be able to get like the the right people for the job and she kind of went above and beyond she didn't just go through the normal avenues she kind of did um, a casting call. So uh, Seku, who plays Toby, we found him on Twitter. He just sent in his casting tape. No way. He, He's so know, great. Isn't he amazing? And so anytime I tell people that, they don't believe me. But it was his very first acting job and he absolutely nailed it. Um, and another thing we did is when we brought everyone in, everyone had individual auditions, but we also did um, chemistry reads. We had everyone sit together and my casting director did a really amazing thing where in between takes, she just kind of left the camera running. And it was really lovely for us to kind of see how they interacted, not just with the script, but without the script as well. Because I, I really like I really like my actors to play with the script and, and improv if need be. Um, and and so that was it was all of those kind of elements to kind of bring the, the cast together. And I think. Um, yeah, I couldn't. I couldn't be happier. Yeah. Do you, would you say there's one character in particular that you probably resonate with more than the other ones? Ooh, it, yes. I I think if anything, maybe probably Omar. Just geeky, um, <laughs> geeky. I think um, oddly, and people always find it odd when I say this, but Femi as well. And I say Femi is that Femi is just trying his best to kind of like navigate his way through. And and that was a similar thing with me when I was at university. <clears throat> I, re I, re I found myself assimilating. I mean, it was yeah. odd when I came back from university 
all my friends said to me, what happened to the accent? Uh, and I think just being in that world, I was just like, oh, well, everyone else speaks like this. So I'm going to speak like this as well. So I think those two characters probably sit most to me. But I, if, if, if truth be told, I think there's a bit of all of them in me, mm -hmm. but probably those two. Who would you say is the most fun to write for, to imagine uh, scenarios for, where you're like, ah, we could we could just go crazy with this? <laughs> you know what it it was I, it's odd I, I I enjoy writing for every single one of them for different mm -hmm. reasons yeah. so obviously when you watch the show Toby because like you say you can go anywhere with him and he's a very funny guy and you know it, there's a side of him that is so not me which makes it so fun to write but then you've got like the the heavy weightedness of Jaheim mm -hmm. and the, the things that he goes through. But then you've got like Lear, who's just like black power and just black everything. And that is like really inspiring to kind of write and coming up with like titles for the T-shirt she wears and stuff like that. Um, Femi is also a favorite one of mine to write just because dramatically he's just, you never know where he's going to go as well. And Omar is just so sweet. So yeah, I've got a soft spot for all of them. Toby has so many good one-liners too. Like I I love right when the show opens and he's like, it's not our fault underprivileged black boys are in at the moment because Leah just feels so behind. That's that was like one of my favorite moments. <laughs> like yeah. right when I turned on the show, I was like, uh, oh, this is gonna be great. This is gonna be a good time. I also love the um the scene where he's in uh uh, Japanese class and then he just starts going off and he's like okay can we go now <laughs> and I'm just like just those moments are just so so great for all of the characters but his in particular it's like bringing those funny elements in what mm -hmm. made you I mean I feel like you obviously could have did a direction of just making it just funny and it having some of those you know, little moments in there, but what made you be like, hey, like there's a bigger issue or a bigger thing that we need to touch on. So it needs to be more of like a dramedy. Oh, I, I would say, I, I think it was just from a real experience. And I think mm -hmm. even at my time at university, I mean, I had like massive highs and massive lows. And so it almost felt natural to combine the two. Um, and it, 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 I can understand why sometimes people are like so thrown by it because, you know, you, you could start watching it. And you're like, this is just, <laughs> this is just everyone having a lovely time. And then all of a sudden, that <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it, it really throws you. But I think like that is life. And I, and I, and I wanted to kind of play with that. And I kind of wanted to play with unexpected twists and turns like life does, you know? And I mean, that's, that it makes for good drama, but that is what life is as well. So I really wanted to, I, I really wanted to mix those two worlds. And I think um, when you can get that balance right, and you know, my directors, Atosha was on that first block. She she did an amazing job of like combining those two worlds together, which was really really amazing. Yeah. Do you? I said my one of my favorite quotes. Do you have like a favorite quote from the show or a favorite scene? Uh, well, do you know what? This is bad because both of those moments are my favorite. I mean, definitely, definitely the uh, Toby in Japanese class. That mm -hmm. is, yeah, because uh, it, it, he performs it to absolute perfection. So mm -hmm. it has a very, very warm place in my heart. Um, favorite line. Yeah, that is one of my favorite lines as well. Um, there must be more. <laughs> <laughs> there were quite a few i also love the coach too um yeah lady coach, she's love. great like just just so unexpected um what would you say was like the most challenging part of creating a show like this um i think it, it was quite hard because i wanted to talk about a very particular experience mm -hmm. of uh, blackness being in very white institutions. Um, but sometimes it can be quite hard to intellectualize those feelings. Um, sometimes it's just a feeling. Right. So I was making sure that my team 
So I got a team of like black writers. So I wanted to make sure that sometimes we were just comfortable to kind of go, I don't know how to phrase this, but do you mm. know when? And and we would sit there and we would discuss it and, and we'd try to put that into scripts. And also it was just like a safe space. So we would share a lot of stories and there was like, a lot of arguments that we would have of how we portrayed these characters. Um, because, you know, th there's no one mold of blackness, do you know what I mean? And so exactly. that was very, it was such a delicate, tricky thing to kind of master. So that all of those kind of elements were really tricky, but I feel like we were all pulling in the same direction um, along with my director as well. And, you know, we made sure that we got black hair and makeup and black costumes, just everything to make sure that we set the world to make sure that this was a real lived experience. But not only that as well, but making sure that it was accessible to those who hadn't lived that experience because mm. I wasn't trying to make something just for us. I wanted I wanted everyone to kind of look at it, understand it and also connect with it. Because um, even though you may not be black in a white institution, you would have felt the feeling of otherness in 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 a space and that's what I kind of wanted yeah I feel like that's something that you see too a lot with the character Abby um mm -hmm. just seeing when we meet her she's kind of one way and then getting to know uh the scholarship kids more and more and talking about her blackness more and then she just goes on that full rant <laughs> where she's like um you said this to me you said this to me and you didn't even know <laughs> that she was internalizing all these things because she's just kind of had to take it on the chin um mm -hmm. so even just moments like that are really important for audiences to see um you know there's no one experience for for being black like you mentioned so yeah 100 and and that was one of the the that was one of the hardest things to kind of achieve because you know there were there are only so many black characters but i feel like people are that there, there's enough to kind of understand it's like oh we've we've just kind of looked at these specific experience we're not trying to tell everyone's experience but we're just looking at these specific experiences and i think i think that kind of comes across yeah why do you i mean what do you think sets this coming of age story um, apart from others. I, I, I would argue there's not enough coming in a coming of age stories out now, especially with black kids. So what, what do you think like just sets this apart? Cause we've obviously seen some types of these worlds a little bit, but I think what's really special about it is just the way that you've set it up. But yeah, if you just want to like dive into that a little bit too. Yeah. I mean, I mean, first of all, I think, like you say, it's so rare to see like black teens on screen. So that in itself, mm -hmm. I think as soon as like I pitched it, it was already a bit like, well, we've not seen it. Do you mean yeah. before I started writing it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that helps in itself. And then also I think um, the way that these characters move in this situation and and it it they are so fish out of water. I think, you know, right. sometimes you watch a lot of shows like such education, which I absolutely adore, but you know, they're all on like the same playing field. Whereas these characters are very much from a completely different world mm -hmm. and they have forces that are working against them. And, you know, to the point of even the teachers and parents, there's lots of forces working against them. And I think that in itself, right. but seeing how they kind of persevere and push through and thrive and that is new in itself and I think there's a there's a there's a joy to see in these characters overcome there's a real real joy in that and I think that's kind Definitely. of what sets it apart and that, I think that's what people over here people have been loving it because it's funny whenever I talk about it's such a bizarre thing to talk about the show because it sounds so heavy but the show but itself, it's so funny yeah <laughs> it's it hilarious is. yeah it's just it's it's an uplifting show and I think it's it's because what the show really is even though I'm looking through the lens of race and racism and class what the show is is about being others but still kind of finding your tribe and like and pushing through and and sometimes it's also how we see happy endings as well we seem to think that happy endings mean that the world is suddenly perfect it's not you still live in an imperfect world it's just that you found your people or you right. or people have a better understanding of you and you have a better understanding of people and i think that's what we kind of dive into in the show 
Definitely. And I feel like sometimes we in the States, we don't kind of hear as much or see as much, you know, the conversations that you guys are having about race or about blackness and things like that. What do you hope that viewers in North America take away from the show? Oh, yeah. I mean, it's very true. I suppose it's, I suppose you guys tend to have, you know, when we get stuff sent over, you guys will have our like Downton Abbeys and stuff like that. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, it, you know, I think it will be quite interesting to kind of see, yeah, how race, how race plays a part in British society, because mm -hmm. in the UK, you know, I, I find and tell me if I'm wrong, but in America, it's much more about race, whereas in Britain, it's much about, more about class. And it's just class and race tend to go hand in hand because just as a general rule, people of color tends to be working class. Um, and so I feel like yeah. this show will kind of have a, like a real kind of window into how, yeah, class and privilege really kind of separates Britain um, and and the, the inner workings, like the... <laughs> British racism is so much more embedded and it's I, I don't want to use the word sophisticated but it's just very, <laughs> it's so you know it's not as in your face maybe precisely yeah exactly we've I think there's been like centuries that have passed in order for it to really kind of ingrain itself and so mm -hmm. when people say that they're not racist they genuinely believe it and it's because it's so ingrained into the culture um, that it doesn't require someone shouting abuse at you from across right. the street. It, it, it can take place in a workspace and it's not necessarily someone have to, has to be actively prejudiced. It's just, it's inactivity sometimes. Yeah, and I think that's one of the things that I got watching from the show too, just because I feel like in America, we're not always aware um, of what, you know, other struggles are with about race in different countries. So to see this perspective in this light, I'm like, okay, like, all right, you know. <laughs> it, Which is great because, you know, it, I think it's the same with any that, you know, I remember the first time I went to Australia and seeing how racism worked there. And I was like, wow, that's okay. that's completely different. You know, but my mm -hmm. entire life, I, I know how racism works in Britain and it's because it's it's so embedded in my culture. It's my it's what I watch, it's my music. Whereas in Australia, it was completely alien to me. So it's quite nice to kind of bring a show like this in North America so you can kind of see how how it works over here as well. Definitely agree. Um uh for season two, I'm gonna just put that out there. Season two, what <laughs> uh are there any themes or Anything that you would maybe want to explore that you didn't really get to explore this time around? Yes. Yes, definitely. I'm I'm not going to tell you them. You can tell <laughs> me one. Uh, maybe just one, you know, because I won't know who or what or. <laughs> oh, I see. I see. Um, I mean, if, if truth be told, I think I, if anything, I'm just, I'm just going to go, I'm just going to delve deeper into characters and, and what's so lovely about that first series is, is I feel that you only get like, a t we mm -hmm. do a lot of story, but you only get a taste of each character. But yeah. I, I love to delve in a bit deeper to kind of those inner workings of why those characters are the way that they are and maybe even get to see much more of their home life to understand why they work in such ways. Um, so, it's it's kind of up for grabs um but yeah there's there's a lot of there's a lot of interesting stuff that we've already started to explore if if we if we get to go again very cool yeah i'm i'm hoping for it i'm going to tell everybody i know about it so you know right. we'll you. we'll see what happens um also wanted to ask like wearing multiple hats in the creative process like Tell me a little bit about that because you obviously created the show, wrote the show, you're brainstorming, but then there's like business and all of that. Like what, what are some of the, the elements that you find exciting about being fully involved in that process, but then also like challenging? Uh, I, I mean, I like being across it all uh -huh. simply because I think when you're making a show like this, mm -hmm you have to be in the room you have to be yeah. in the room for all the decisions and 
it's not even a case of, I mean, I had an incredible team on the show, um, but it's not necessarily a case of trying to take control of everything. It's just making sure that you're there for every conversation. So you right. can, you know, it, creatively, there was a lot of black people involved, but it wasn't a, just the black team. So sometimes decisions are being made. So I've got to make sure that I'm there to kind of go, oh, I see why you'd say that, but it can't be that for this reason. And people yeah. are like, cool. And uh, that wasn't necessarily the case on my first TV show. A lot of conversations were taking place without me. And then when problems would arise, it'd be a bit like, I should have been there. Right. Um, so I think it's always important to kind of be in the room. And that's why I'm always an exec. In terms of other things, in terms of writing, creating, acting, I just love wearing all those different hats. I think there's it, it, it they're, they're different challenges. And and I just mm-hmm. love, I love those challenges. And it, yeah. it's nice to kind of be across it. And it can be, you know, it can be challenging and, you know, uh, I'm constantly writing after, you know, we're, even though we're filming, I'm still making, doing rewrites mm-hmm. and stuff, which can be tricky because I'm also, you know, my director was having a go at me because I'm sitting in the corner rewriting the script. And <laughs> the scene. So uh, yeah, it, 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 it comes with problems, but um, we always, we always work our way through it. Yeah. And then before I let you go, I just want to ask, there's been a few critiques of the show of people saying that they feel like it's overly stereotypical or uh, anything like that. What is, what is your thoughts or what do you have to say about that? Yeah. I mean, I, if truth be told, I've kind of like brushed them off. Um, I think people will always have their opinions. Mm -hmm. I feel like the first that first season we get a lovely taste of those characters and if anything I can understand if people say I felt that I didn't have enough of this and I'd be like cool because in season two the right. only, <laughs> there's only so far I can delve in but I think if anyone said that they felt like I didn't do it right then that I disagree with I think I've I think I've I've created five really strong characters all moving in this space in a very different way. Um, And I can only put it down to taste rather than it being wrong. I think me and my writers work (laughs) pretty hard. Yeah, and, and, you know, I stick by it. I stick by it all. I wouldn't change a thing. Taste is a luxury. Taste is a privilege. And everybody doesn't have it, so, you know. (laughs) Amen. (laughs) Amen. (laughs) A <laughs> uh, pleasure to talk with you today, Daniel. Congratulations. I'm super excited for us over here to see the show. It's incredible. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you.